Hey guys, today we're tearing down the Hantec CC65 ACDC current clamp. And if you've been with our channel for a little while, you'll know that uh, this is a, a device we've looked at previously. We did a summary video looking at the specs, um, the eBay page and the, develop, uh, the uh, manufacturer's website. Um, and so had a quick look at it, but today we're actually going to take a closer look. We're going to take the thing apart, do a teardown and, and see what's inside of this thing. So I recommend you start with the first video if you haven't seen it already. I'll link it down in the description um, so you can see exactly what this thing is. Um, just to recap, it's a current clamp, ACDC. Uh, you put your conductor through there. It'll measure the current. And then it's got a BNC connector on this one, this particular model. So you can plug it in your oscilloscope and then you can plot a current uh, trend on your oscilloscope or a, a, a measurement in current on your oscilloscope, which is really handy. Um, so you can see uh, current in detail. Uh, as opposed to like a, a more traditional current clamp. Hang on, I'll show you one of them. Something like this is a more traditional current clamp as it may be more commonly known. This is a Fluke 322. And uh, this is something that you just put around a wire, you click it on and it'll give you an amp reading there. And you can see here amps AC and I can also do volts with these things here. But if you're looking at the amps, this is something you just go onto a switch panel or a distribution board and you just clamp onto a circuit you can see the amps coming through it instantaneously. Uh, its refresh rate isn't amazingly fast, but you can sort of see what's going on just as you're looking at the screen. Um, very useful, um, very handy for um, looking at loads on circuits. But the benefit of having a clamp like this one that has a BNC connector is you plug it into your oscilloscope and you can actually plot that on the oscilloscope screen, capture it. You can see all the little pulses of current and all that sort of stuff going on. You can trigger on it as you would with a normal voltage measurement. So this is sort of like this thing, but for the lab, not for the site sort of thing. So uh, let's tear it down now and have a look at what's inside. So just looking at the back of this device, we've got the door here that has a little screw that holds a nine volt battery. And then we've got a couple of these bigger screws and a bunch of little mini screws here. I'll just zoom you in. Okay. So there you go. It's just a standard 9 volt. I just put a little industrial battery in there. Uh, that's just an alkaline. And you see this has got like the little 9 volt clip on a lead, which isn't great. These things can break after a little bit of clipping and unclipping, but it's all right. It's cheap. It works. At least I used a threaded insert for the battery cover because um, using a self-tapper there would be a little bit cheap, right? But you're not going to wear that out, so that's good. Uh, so we'll keep going. Now, is that going to come apart yet? Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, cool. I'll zoom you out a little bit. So you see what we've got here. I've just taken these three screws and the battery cover off, and that comes apart. So our jaws here very handily is still working. So I can take the jaws apart in a minute. There's also the hinge joint there and the spring you can see. But straight away, zoom you in again, you can see all these little trim pots for the calibration, which I'm not gonna touch. And they're not, they haven't enameled them. Usually what they'll do is they'll set them and they'll put a little blob of paint or enameled so that it doesn't move. Um, but these are a little bit precarious, so I'm not gonna touch them because uh, I don't want to put this thing out of calibration. Um, and the other thing you can see is a big filter cap here or a big bolt capacitor. And there's these two ribbon cables that you might be able to see coming up to the jaw. So you've got one, I'm assuming, for the upper jaw and the lower jaw. There's another one there going off to the separate jaws and to the, um, the uh, coil or the, the core there, which will be doing that Hall, of, hall effect sensing. Um, and then these little flat flex connectors and these are the type where they're not the little ones where you flip them up these are the type where you have got to push the little thing forward by the looks of it like that I can do it with my fingers you can see I just pushed it forward and that little flex cable will fall out like that so we've got four wires there and four wires there and then that's obviously going through like an analog front end circuit and uh, being amplified and all those sort of things and the range switch would be used to select the different um, you know ranges on that so actually what I might do is very carefully push that up. I don't want to cause problems with that. And let me get my trusty um, 
terminal driver out here just so I can carefully push that up there we go and we'll take that other flat flex out so just remember <laughs> note to self the, the one on the top goes to the left the one on the bottom goes to the right the good thing about flat flex cables like this is they tend to sort of hold their shape at least a little bit so that you can sort of figure out where they go back later just moving these switches it feels like that PCB really wants to come loose looks like there's a single little Phillips screw in the middle there so we'll take that out I think that's loose it's just sort of like spinning and carefully there we go so it looks like there's a lot of analog stuff going on in this board there's all these little trim pots there's a bunch of passives and capacitors and bits and pieces um, but there are these ICs that, and we can look up the data sheets for them in a sec so I'll do that now um, but I suspect it's going to be a Hall effect sensor and maybe some sort of amplification for that um, just you know the way these things usually work would be a Hall effect sensor and then uh, the signal coming off of these is an amplified and filtered through that uh, so let's check out those part numbers and then uh, we'll go further into the teardown and look at the clamp. So here's a close up view of the main PCB from the clamp meter. You can see it's mostly surface mount, uh, a couple of through hole bits and pieces here and there. Um, but it's very analogy as I've said previously, it's, there's no digital circuitry going on here, there's no microcontrollers or anything, it's just all analog circuitry. And it's actually quite hard to trace out because all the parts and the traces go in and around underneath parts and wires everywhere. So what I'm going to do is just show some of the part numbers and we'll get a bit of an idea of uh, what's going on just through the part numbers. Um, and you can do some other research on those data sheets yourself as well. I'll leave some links down below in the description. So up the top here, this part, I couldn't find out what it was. It's a five pin device, but I believe it's a linear voltage regulator. Uh, and I think the capacitors nearby have something to do with that. What it looks like is happening is the 9 volt battery goes through the main switch and into this device and then the rest of the board is powered out of that. So I'm pretty safe in saying that's a linear voltage regulator I believe. Uh, and then there's these three parts which are text instruments, P272C, precision dual op amps. So I think they've got one per Hall effect sensor here, you can see they're quite close to the ribbon connectors. And at the bottom they've got one down there as well and that's sort of near the range switch and the rest of those little uh, calibration trim pots. Uh, so it's all, you know, again, analog op amps, amplification and filtering of the signal. And the last I see on the board here is a Texas Instruments TL026C, and that's a differential high frequency amplifier. So again, more analog stuff, um, but that sort of gives you an idea of what's there. The rest of the parts on this board are all just passives, capacitors, resistors, and these little trim pots. Uh, you can see down the bottom there, they've got the uh, BNC connector coming out. So that goes in there and you've got your signal wire and then your, your ground shield um, coming out of that into your oscilloscope. So this is the jaw section here and I've taken the screws out so we can just remove the lid. And previously I assumed that one ribbon cable was for the lower jaw and one's for the upper jaw. But it looks like the lower jaw is just, a, just the uh, core here and the upper jaw actually has both flat flex is going to it and if I pop that out just tip that out of my hand there you can see that you've got this transformer core almost it's like this laminated uh, metal here which forms the current transformer and then you've got these two little ICs and they're marked with SE on each one and they've got four pins and you can see each flat flex has the four conductors in it this one as well and you can see they've got one on each end and, and by looking at it, I'll try and zoom in a little bit and get a bit of a close-up view. If you can see that there. Yeah, that's about the best I'm going to get like that. But you can see how the flat flex goes under the IC and the four pins are there and you've got um, what looks to be an insulating layer going between this laminated core and then these ICs. So what I believe is happening is you've got the, the thicker conductors in the flat flex would be passing current through the ICs and then the two thinner ones are the signal coming back with a voltage differential which is a classic Hall effect uh, where you've got your current going through the Hall effect uh, sensor and then the signals coming back now maybe more complex than that in the IC they may 
have some sort of amplification and signal processing in the IC, but essentially that's what it looks like they're doing. And in fact, they've got two Hall effect sensors on this here, maybe one for one direction, one for the other direction, being north and south or the polarity uh, positive negative. And then this part here, you can see you've got your, your core here. And so that being there, even though it doesn't actually touch, it's behind plastic, it's enough to induct that current going through this core, passing through the Hall effect sensors here. And with the current going through that, you get that Hall effect, which is the voltage differential um, being produced and coming back here. By the way, check out a video. I'll leave a link in the description below. I've done a video explaining exactly what the Hall effect is and um, who invent, who discovered it, I should say, and uh, a little bit more detail on that. So if you're interested in what the Hall effect is and how it works, click on our video below and uh, you'll see a bit more information on that. So that's pretty much it, a look inside this Hantec current clamp. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll catch you on another video.